Thank you. Bless you. Thank you very much. We are digging into uh, <laughs> who runs the church and how. And, and, and that's very interesting because most denominations did not use the Bible when they drew up how to run their church. Uh, and that's one reason why uh, uh, they don't grow, you know. They can't, they can't grow. They got bands around them, and they're bands of human making, not God making. And, and so uh, uh, <clears throat> if we study the Word of God, we'll see how God expected the church to go. Now, in uh, some countries of the world at the moment, they're having tremendous and amazing moves of God's Holy Spirit upon them. And, and I'm, I mean, they're getting saved by the hundreds of thousands of people. And you would, if you were there, you would find that they're, they're, they're functioning very simply. Uh, they don't have a big black book about that thick, you know, called the principles of the church and doctrines of the church and so forth. And the way the church is run, they, they're being energized by the Holy Spirit for that. But if you'd open your Bibles today, we are dealing again uh, with the function of the ministries that God has placed in the church. And as you know, uh, if you turn to page 92, we'll kind of get started there. In Ephesians 4 and, and 41, it says, Now, in the church of the Lord Jesus, and the church is on this earth today, there shall be apostles in it. And they are the key, the key persons and, and the, the, the top-ranking of those that God speaks through to the church. Then there, should, there, are, there will be prophets in the church, which we will be studying momentarily. And then he says, in the church, I will place pastors that will feed and lead and guide the people. And, and then I will put in the evangelists, which will read out, reach outside the body and bring new ones into the body by getting them to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Then he said, then I shall have teachers uh, this, these men are women with a, with, a, with a very select knowledge of God's holy word and able to break it very beautifully uh, to an understandability of the people that they can follow the word of God. And then besides that, we have in the church that God has planted there elders or bishops, and you will find that in 1 Corinthians 12 and 28. Now, we live in a moment today when people think that a bishop is something big, uh, but a bishop is not one of the five ministers in the church. Uh, a, a bishop, which is also an elder, is a place, person that's placed there either by the other elders in the church or by the pastor of the church, and that it, it is a man, a man selection and hoping he's moving by the Spirit. You know, he's <laughs> trying to move by the Spirit, but it, it is not sovereign. Uh, God did not put him there. Uh, men put him there. And if men put him there, then men can remove him from there, you see. Anybody that gives you a job can also fire you. Uh, and and you, you have to keep remembering that, uh, that uh, if somebody gives you a position, either they had no right to give it to you, or they do have the right to withdraw it. Uh, and, and it has to work both ways. And the reason I mention that is because in America today, we have men running around calling, calling themselves bishops, and they, they think they're something big, and really they're just somebody appointed inside the ministry by the pastor because he is the highest official inside the body of Christ functioning as a leader uh, among the people. Uh, a prophet or, or a, an apostle can function over a group of churches. He's not, he is not a pastor necessarily. He, he can function over a group, group of churches and, and raise up churches. He start churches from, from, from the very beginning. And then besides that, he, he says that there are also deacons. As I told you in our last lesson, that an elder normally uh, functions in spiritual ways. Uh, and guiding the people and counseling with the people. And that a, a deacon uh, is one that, that blesses the church in, in material ways. He sees something that needs to be repaired, he does it. If he needs to see someone that's in need, and he helps take care of that. And so the, the, that's the difference between these two ministries that belong in the body of Christ. And then he says, and there are helps in their governments. I do hope we can get into those because 
They are very precious. Many churches do not have this facility, and they cannot function as a total, you know, body of Christ if they don't fu fun function in its, in its totality. And you have the two scriptures right there on page 92, and so we won't go into those. We, we told you in our last lesson that there are men and women uh, who God has raised up to bless in the church. Um, there are denominations that refuse women in a position, but if God calls them to it, uh, then they have a right to it according to the, uh, the moving of God. Then I think we move just a little bit into combinations of ministries. Uh, you, you, can, you can be a pastor and an evangelist. Uh, you, you can be a teacher and an evangelist. And if you were an apostle, you have all five of the ministers function through you in order that you can help and teach all, all the others. So there are combinations of ministries. And, and I ought to say very, you know, strong that there are also uh, ministers that have to do uh, with, uh, uh, with 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 uh, just just helping people in the church and and not and and not uh, uh, and not in great leadership, but very important, and we we should understand that. Now, I, I think we should uh, turn over to page ninety-seven. Uh, we were dealing with, the, with these officers. The office of an apostle is the highest ministry in the church. That's at the bottom of page 97. And then on page 98, it says the Bible lists 78 prophets and prophetesses. And we wouldn't be able to go through all of those, but it would be a good study for you to see the type of personalities that God used. Now, in the Bible, uh, no doubt Adam was the first one that prophesied. Uh, he named all the animals and made it stick. He says, you shall be called so-and-so, and, -so, and they're, they're still called that until this day. And that was a prophetic word that came forth from his, from his inner being. It, it had to be from his inner being. His outer being never would have been able to give a million names off to, to this one or that one of the other creatures of the earth. Enoch was a mighty prophet of God. Maybe some of you haven't noticed that in Jude, which has only one chapter in verses 14 and 15, it says, Enoch, the seventh generation from Adam, he prophesied. See, so he was a prophet. And, and he said, Behold, the Lord cometh with, a, with, with ten thousands of his saints. Now, that hasn't, that hasn't been fulfilled yet. So that, that to me, even before the flood, here was a man so anointed of God, and he saw the, the return of the Lord Jesus, you know, 3,000 years more down, down the road, four, four or 5,000 years down the road. He saw that, that the Lord would come uh, with his saints in, in order to correct the earth, to purge and cleanse the earth. And so that, that's one of the longest views uh, of uh, a prophecy in the entire word of God or, 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 or any any bit anywhere else. And notice in verse 15, which is the next verse, it says, He will come to execute judgment upon all and, and to convince all that, that are ungodly among them of their ungodly deeds. You see, you'd almost think he wrote it yesterday, not, not you know, 5,000 years ago. They've ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches. God has more said against him right now than any generation of mankind. And it's, and, it, and it's an awful thing and a very stupid thing, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Of course, Noah was a great prophet of God, as, as, you, as you know. And he's also, his prophecy is mentioned in the New Testament and First Peter, so you, 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 should, you should follow those very carefully. And then we have others that we don't know so much about. Uh, here's men called Eber in, in Genesis uh, 10 and 25. Abraham was also a prophet, as we all know, speaking of the things of God. And uh, Jacob was also a prophet of God and spoke of those things. Uh, Joseph was a prophet of God and, and, and spoke of the things that would come to pass. Uh, one of the greatest in all the history of mankind, when he, when he said to Pharaoh, there will be seven years of plenty. <laughs> Brother, you, you better have plenty or somebody's going to get his neck cut. You know, and then he said, following that, there will be seven years of famine. Now, that better come, you see, and it did come. It is historically true. 
it is true by, by the Word of God. And so here we, we have very remarkable functions and operations uh, of, of, of God working with man in order to teach man a functioning so long ago. Uh, sometimes I get a little bit disturbed and that we haven't progressed much. <laughs> you think in several thousands of years we learned to do this job better. But we look back there and those men seem to do it better than we are doing it. So uh, we, we wish there'd be some advancement. There is advancement in God. Can you say amen? And God does things better and better. And, and we should learn a, a forward movement. For sure, not a backward movement. Most of the world's in a backward movement when it comes to spiritual things, but we should be in a forward movement. And then you, you, you come to Moses. Uh, you ought to really make note of that. Uh, he wrote 475 verses on prophecy. Now that is a lot of prophetic utterance. And, and uh, you can go through and study all the, that would be several lessons, by the way, uh, all of the prophetic utterances made by this great man Moses and so long, so long ago. It's, uh, it's one of the most exciting things in the Bible. And then you have people like Elijah who prophesied. You have Isaiah, the great prophet. He was called a prophet. Uh, I don't know that uh, people when they said Elijah said prophet, prophet Elijah or not, but they always, they always said the, uh, the, the, the prophet when they came to Isaiah, but uh, they were equal prophets. And, and they, uh, when, when you stand up and say, hey, king, it's not going to rain anymore till I tell it to. Brother, you, you better be talking from the Lord or you won't be around very long. Uh, and, then, and then again, he says, and now it's going to rain. All they saw was a cl little, little cloud about the size of a man's hand. And boy, he said, run for your life. There's going to be a deluge. Uh, it better be a deluge and not a few drops. Uh, and so some people who think they're prophets today should read in the Word of God what prophets did and see what they might be able to perform. We would like for them to perform all the ministers of God. Can you say amen? There was David. He wrote 385 verses of prophecy. Isn't that amazing? And, and there you would have several lessons if you were going to carry that through and divide them up into different types of prophecies that this man prophesied. Now, besides single prophets, I didn't give you all of them, of course. There's Jeremiah. He wrote 985 verses of prophecy. Ooh, that, 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 that gentleman kept himself busy <laughs> prophesying of things that would surely come to pass. Now, your point number four here says there are also groups of prophets. I, I thought that was very interesting. And you, the first group that we have record of are the 70 elders of Israel. And I was reading that again this morning and I got so excited about it. In and, and Numbers 11, 25, and Jehovah came down in a cloud and spake unto him. And he took of the spirit that was upon Moses. He took of his spirit and he gave this under the 70 elders. Isn't that amazing? He took from the inside of a man that had walked with him. Now, it does not say he took from his own insides. He, he's loaded with it, of course. But here was a man that was so full of God that God could take from his insides, you know, and, and he could place that spirit upon 70 people. That's in your second line there, Numbers eleven twenty-five, And he, 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 he took him, <laughs> his blessing, and divided it 70 ways. Ooh, that's getting down to small bits. 70 ways. And it came to pass that when the Spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease to prophesy. Day and night, here were people prophesying. And they took the spirit of this man. I, I think there's a, uh, a, a thing that we should study very, 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 very carefully. And there's, there's several things that can keep you. F f fear can keep you. Uh, I was very, very fearful one time in my life. And, and I was even fearful of being in the flesh. I thought when I spoke in tongues, it should be something that would quiver from my toes to my head, you know. 
and, and that it should be so supernatural that he, the voice wouldn't need to come out my mouth, it could come out my ears, you know, or something. I, I was so confused about that miracle part of that thing. But when I discovered that God had not changed our humanity, that he used the same lungs that I'd used before and the same throat that I'd used before and the same voice that I'd used before, but it took me a long time to get around to knowing that God was going to use the natural in a means that was supernatural. And, and a thing like that can bring fear. I, had, I said, I don't want to be in the natural. I want this thing to be supernatural. And God says, well, I'll have to use your natural. It's all I got to use. Ain't much to it, but I'll, I'll use it, you see. And so God took the natural tongue and the natural lips and the natural throat, and he spoke spiritually through it, you see. You might say miraculously through it, but he, he used this instrument right here. Now, sometimes we have to get across that thing to the other side. Then, uh, when you speak in that manner, then you've got to be careful that somebody moves into the carnality of his, of his body and, and starts using a thing in a, in a corruptive way rather, rather than a building in, posit, in, in a positive way. And so there's an equilibrium there that we have to seek for in that when whatever we do, let us do it with the anointing of God upon us, but God will still be using you and using us. And all the people said, and so here were 70 men. And Moses was so full of something that God could take a piece of what was inside of him and put it upon 70 people. Are you here? That, the number of things you could say about that very strong. What one is that those men first had to respect Moses or it wouldn't have happened. You can't receive spiritual blessing from a person you do not respect. And that's something. Those, those, those apostles could not have received anything from Jesus if they did not have the due respect as to who he was and what he was. They could not have received it, you see. Even on the day of Pentecost, they couldn't receive the Holy Ghost had they not had respect for the person of the Holy Ghost. Can you say amen? Okay. All right. Uh, and, and so uh, the Spirit of God rested upon them. They prophesied, and they didn't ever cease. Now, number B under that is that there are schools of teaching young men to be prophets. <laughs> that got, that got kind of close to me, too, I have to say. And so in 1 Samuel 10 and 5, it says, After that, thou shalt come to the hill of God, where is the garrison of the Philistines, and it shall come to pass, when thou art come thither to the city, that thou shalt meet a company of prophets. Now they had congregated and become a company. A company of prophets, and they will be coming down from the high place with a psalm street. They have, that means they've been up there praying and, you know, talking with God. And they shall come down with a psalmster, with tablets, with a pipe, and a harp before them. And they shall prophesy. And, and number six, and the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you, and you shall prophesy with them, and shall be turned into another man. This was the first king of Israel, of course, this was talking about. Shall be turned into another man. Shall be turned into another man. I'm so afraid that in our modern age that we take these things so lightly we don't even get them. That, that we, uh, the, the, the intensity on the inside of us is not sufficiently great, you know, uh, that, that we can be what God wants us to be and do what God wants us to do, say what God wants us to say. But the main thing is we want to show that there, even in those days, there were schools you could go to that were separated. And they went apart to themselves, it says, and they sung, they played music, and, 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 uh, and with all these things, and then they also prophesied. And they were in groups. The next verse says, And let it be when the, these signs are coming to you, that, that, that thou do as occasion serve you, for God is with you, and thou shalt go down before me to Gilgal, and behold, I will come down unto thee to offer burnt offerings and to sacrifices sacrifice of peace offerings. Seven days shall you tarry there till I come to meet to thee and show thee 
what thou shalt do. And, and so we have here the functioning and operation of groups of men that are already dedicated under God. Your number five, there were 16 Old Testament writing prophets. Uh, and I think that's very interesting that these prophets didn't only just speak with a loud voice, they wrote it down. And, and uh, there are 16 of these and they're all the way from Isaiah to Malachi. These are men that prophesied, but they didn't just prophesy like a sermon. They wrote it down and published it and sent it out to the people that, that they might see it. Number six, there were four New Testament writing prophets. There was Peter, and you have all the scriptures there of it. There was Paul, and there, there was James, and there was John. These people not only prophesied, but they were writing prophets. They, they wrote this thing down. Now, in the New Testament, it also includes several non-writing prophets. But I add that non-writing in there like I have. And, and, uh, and so John the Baptist was a prophet of God that didn't write a book, you see. And it goes ahead and gives you some wonderful scriptures there that you ought to, ought to study. Zacharias was a remarkable prophet. Each of these could take a whole sermon, you know, and, and, and dealing with them. But uh, uh, John the Baptist's father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited us and redeemed, uh, and redeemed his people. And he went all through prophecy uh, of what God had told him there. Also, if you look on page 104, there was just a gentleman named Simeon. And, and uh, that's in Luke 125, uh, that he lived in the temple. He was an elderly person. And he said, Thus saith the Lord, the Lord has dealt with me in the days wherein he looked upon me to, to take away my reproach among men. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into the city of Galilee named Nazareth. And it goes to hell and, head and tells how they how the uh, uh, how the Lord how the Lord spoke right down regarding uh, the Lord Jesus Christ and how he uh, how he would be born and, and so forth. Then you go a little further into the New, New Testament. Simeon stayed in the temple and worshipped the Lord, and God told him that the, that he would see the Son, the, the 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 glorious one, before he died. Then you have Agabus. And, and he, he, he told about a drought that would come and a famine, and it did come. And then you have Ananias, said, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the nations. Ananias prophesied this to Saul uh, when he became converted. And then uh, you have Barnabas, Simeon, Lucius, and Madison. And, and that you, you, you find in Acts chapter 13, that were prophets of the Lord. And, and then you have... The prophets that spoke to different groups. Uh, look at that. That's A, individuals, where it was for individuals. And then uh, uh, to a nation, uh, to a nation. And then you have them that spoke to the world. And, and so uh, a prophet can speak to one person, like the prophet uh, Nathan spoke to David. Or you can speak to a generation. Or you can, you can speak to the world, because some of these... I like Jeremiah, he says, and I have ordained you a prophet under the nations with an S on the end of it. And, and so prophecy can be for a church, it can be for a group, it can be for one person, or it can be, it can be to the nations. And your number four there, it says that there will be uh, female prophets. And I think that's a very interesting one. Uh, that I'd like to start with if someone would help me to always start in the right place. How many notice I start in the wrong place once in a while? Good, you're nice people. Uh, if, I wouldn't know it unless somebody told me because, you know, I could preach the same sermon every Sunday and you would enjoy it. You say, why? Because it doesn't come out of my mind, it comes out of my spirit. And so I might say the same thing and you might enjoy it more the next time you did the first time. Say, well, I got more of it the second time. But, and so I have to have a little guidance along that and just where. But I think I can remember this one because the girls have got into the dance. And uh, I think I can come up with that all right. So in our, our next lesson, uh, we will be uh, dealing with that. And, and we will be completing, completing that. 
And then we're going to start dealing with other, uh, with other things, the purposes of these gifts of people to the church. Uh, why did God give them? Yeah, that is very, very exciting. Why, why God gives certain people to the church to do, to do certain things. And all the people said, give the Lord a hand, everybody.